So should you use Node or Spring Boot for your next project? The answer, as usual, it depends. And here's on what. So first off, I know that there's a lot of fanboys like for both uh, Node and for Spring Boot. And that's totally fine. But I just wanted to mention one uh, thing. They are just tools, right? They are tools that execute on the business model. So the important thing is actually the business and not so much the programming language. It's just important to keep in mind, right? Let's always keep this in mind because, you know, we don't code for the sake of coding, but we code to achieve like a business goal. And I think this entire discussion has to be seen within that context. Now, with that being said, uh, let's just jump into a few pros and cons of each technology. And then we can see in which use case we would pick what. Let's maybe start with Node. Node is pretty good when it comes to getting things done. So you can just quickly write down like your code and it's totally fine. Uh, you don't have to deal with the type system. So that's pretty good. Um, so you're really, really quick. That would come in handy if you are doing a hackathon, right? If you do a hackathon, nah, you probably don't want to pick Spring or Spring Boot because you want to get something up and running as quickly as possible. And Node itself is very good when it comes to I.O. heavy things. So that means you have a lot of requests and they are just, um, you know, reading and writing to the database or you are um, streaming data like for real time things, something with sockets. That's pretty good. Everything that is like I.O. heavy and that does not have like many computations, like these kind of things, they are really good uh, when you do them with Node. Plus, another advantage is that the Node ecosystem itself is huge. Like you have a library for pretty much anything. Of course, that also has a few downsides, right? With the Node modules and, and these kind of things. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that you have a very rich ecosystem is very helpful because it allows you to reuse stuff. So that's like the third reason. Yeah, so the fourth reason is that it's pretty easy to find Node developers, right? So everybody's grandmother can do JavaScript. <laughs> that's like pretty good because uh, if you want to scale up the team, uh, you can do so. You know, it's not a super exotic thing where you have to search forever, but you will probably going to find some good people. Number five is, of course, that it is very lightweight. So if you have like a personal project or you are on budget or you're just starting out, then a node server is like super good. It has super low uh, memory footprint and you can handle a lot of concurrent connections if you don't have business logic, right? That's the important thing. And that brings us to the cons of Node. The upside that it's very quick to write because it's not statically typed is also a downside at the same time, right? Because as your system grows, your system will be harder to maintain and stability might be an issue. So a lot of bugs can creep into a Node application that could have been avoided if you had chosen a statically typed technology like Spring Boot, for example. Uh, the second thing is that people are oftentimes very undisciplined when it comes to Node or to JavaScript, simply because they, they just write it so that it works, but they don't pay too much attention to code quality and to stability. And it could be that your application is not as stable as it could be. Yeah, and another thing I already mentioned it uh, previously is that Node is not very good when it comes to computations. So if you have computations or any business logic, state machines, uh, these kind of things, I would advise against Node. I would strongly advise against Node uh, because it's just not what it is built for, right? After all, it's just a tool and this tool works particularly well for a couple of use cases. But for other use cases, it just doesn't work at all. That's basically where other technologies come into play. Yeah, so let's quickly talk about Spring and Spring Boot. So when we're talking about Spring and Spring Boot, we're talking about the JVM. And the JVM has just fantastic support for pretty much everything. There's an Apache library for anything you might ever want to do, including like complex computation, including encryptions, including like state machines. You can do anything in that technology. And that's why it's so good and that's why it's so commonly used in the enterprise. So it has a very, very good ecosystem 
it is that's the first reason it is statically typed yeah so the third reason is that on the jvm itself it's just way easier to do computations right because you have your threads if you do it well like you are using something like webflux or like reactive java in general that is like really good computations are like pretty efficient and that's the main advantage over something like node or javascript yeah and the fourth reason is that it's way easier to satisfy compliance requirements that you might have in, in large enterprises, right? Something like I need to audit tables. So who changed which record at which date in the database? So Hibernate can do that for you. It's super easy. Uh, although Hibernate is not part of Spring Boot. It's like a separate thing, but pretty much everyone uses like Hibernate and, and JPA. And, you know, just in general, like security things. So for example, encryption on the on the message level. So something like JSON web encryption, JSON web signature, these kind of things are very well supported by Java. But of course, uh, not everything is sunshine and rainbows. It also has some significant downsides. So for one, it has a very steep learning curve, right? There's, the ecosystem is just so big you have very long class names so for a beginner it's probably not that easy to pick up um, the second thing is you are of course slower in actually writing the code you know because it is statically typed yeah and another downside is that the resource consumption when it comes to hosting is like much 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 higher than if you pick something like node so spring boot tends to consume a lot of memory and of course that's more expensive uh, but again, the upside is that with Java and, and with the JVM, you kind of have support for pretty much anything you might want to do. Yeah, and that actually brings us to the conclusion. So if you have like something that you need to get done really quickly, if you have something that uh, if you are doing like a hackathon, for example, if you are on budget or when you want to host it, or if you are doing something with real time, like chat applications or streaming things then like node might be a very good and a very solid choice if you are in the enterprise context and you have like compliance requirements and like cost or hosting costs don't matter so much so compliance is more important um, and you can afford a longer development time uh, then probably spring boot is like the way to go also because with java or with jvm languages typically you are like statically typed uh, so of course with java you are and like one more thing i wanted to mention to kind of conclude this entire discussion is another super important non-functional aspect is what you already know or what your team already knows so unless you have a very good reason for picking spring or spring boot or any other technology just pick what you already know for if you know node and you think okay that application might be good in node we don't have that much business logic just go with that right because remember it's about the business and not about the tool so if you already know something really well and the team is already proficient in it just run with that yeah so that's my take on whether you should use node or spring boot for a particular project as usual the answer is it depends uh, yeah, so if you have any other questions, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. You can also tweet me. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Production Coder. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, or maybe I forgot something, please also let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, apart from that, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.